told me a paper moon sailing over a cardboard sea but it wouldn't be make believe if you believed in me yes it's only a canvas sky just as proud for a muslin tree but it wouldn't be make believe if you believed in me without your love it's a honky tonk parade without your love it's a melody played in a penny arcade it's a bottom and barely world just as phony as it can be but it wouldn't be make believe if you believed in me Without your love, it's a honky tonk parade. Without your love, it's a melody played in a penny arcade. It's a bottom and belly world, just as phony as it can be. But it wouldn't be make believe if you believed in me. I said it wouldn't be make believe if you believed in me. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, everybody. We are live at Miss Stephanie's in our brand new venue at Sisters in Brooklyn. Thank you, Sean, by the way. <laughs> Y'all right back there, hey? So I just want to preface everything that I had the flu this week, so I'm really stuffed up. And if you can't understand me, well, it's probably just like normal. I just want to grab something really quickly. We have a super exciting show for you today. It's a female spectacular um, but first, you know, there's a lot of things going on this month. You know, it's February, January, done, thank God. That's like we're all recouping after the holidays and everything. But you guys, I don't even think you probably know how much happens in February. For instance, it's American Heart Month. It's Black History Month, Creative Romance Month, which is probably why Fifty Shades of Grey is coming out in a few weeks. I can tell you guys are all excited, especially that guy over there. Great American Pie Month, Cherry Month. Grapefruit month, so you guys, cherry month, wait, you have cherries on. Wow, you're like right in, in there, you're ready. National weddings month, so somebody call June and let them know. And the third week of this month is my favorite, it's International Flirting Week. Did anybody know that? I mean, I flirt every day, every week. Like, I feel like I'm, like, I'm ready for this, that third week. Um, but today, in particularly, is Kite Flying Day. You want to fly a kite later? I know. It's like you couldn't do that. They couldn't put that in May, really. Um, and today is also Boy Scout Day. Do we have any Boy Scouts out there? No, because we're too old. But a very lucrative thing is if a man grows up to be an Eagle Scout. That's what you want for sure. And, of course, there's a bunch of other holidays going on. But Valentine's Day, right? Who could forget about that? I'm very excited about Valentine's Day this year. Um, I think it's going to be like off the charts for me personally. I've been getting a lot of mail lately. Um, I'm a very wanted woman, I'm sure. You, it's, it's no shock. And you'll hear right now, these are the kind of emails that I've been getting. Don't be jealous. Try not to be jealous. Okay, these are real emails that I got in my email box. The first one is from Aisha Tra. And the subject is, hi. Hello, my name is Aisha. I saw your profile today at Facebook and like it. Can you contact me back at my private email to have my photo? Thank. 
No S, no punctuation, no proper grammar. As a girl after my own heart. And this is my personal favorite one. This is from Anita Nadaraye. I might be pronouncing her name wrong. Subject, hello. Okay. Hi, nice to meet you. How are you doing right now? <laughs> my name is Anita. I am single, never married before. I came across your Facebook profile today, and I liked what I saw there. Please. I'm interested in knowing more about you. Please respond to my address email directly. I have something special I would like to reveal to you. I will send my pictures and tell you more about myself in my next email so I have your response. Thanks, Anita. I mean, these are the kind of things that I get like, you know, every day. That's like just two of like the six that I've gotten in the last week, which made me start thinking because my Facebook profile is like, the privacy settings are so, I mean, they are so, like, strong that I'm not, I'm wondering how. And I'm like, well, was I looking at something online? So now I'm being targeted by black lesbians. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm just saying I think that maybe they, I mean, if, if I have a profile picture of a Joan Jett signature on my ass, I don't understand why they're coming after me. It was a good photo, though. So... Let's just say, I'm putting it out there, I think that this Valentine's Day between Anita and Aisha and me, we're going to have some fun. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I, um, like I said, a little couple latecomers there. We have a very exciting show for you tonight. Our first performer, I am very excited to welcome Carla Ulbrich. Um, to our stage, you have, may have seen or heard this comedic singer, songwriter, guitarist, author, professional, smart aleck on ABC, BBC, that's for the guy from London over there, Dr. Demento's serious radio show or on tour throughout the US and England. She's won numerous awards, including first place in the South Florida Folk Fest Songwriter Competition and Novelty Song of the Year, the and at the Just Plain Folks Awards. She is a published author and penned a humorous book about surviving the healthcare, healthcare system. And currently, she is working on her sixth album. So. Please put your hands together for Carla Ulbrich. National Flirting Week. Coming up. I'm going to start practicing. Okay. I got married. I'm out of practice. <laughs> I'd like to dedicate this to all of you who had to work in the mall at any point. Anybody ever work in the mall? You worked in the mall? <laughs> Victoria's Secret. Well, that's a very special part of the mall. Yeah, it was a while back when I worked in the mall, but I felt like I was in an aquarium. Three or four times a day, my boss has to sneak away. And sometimes I hear him say, it's a tough road to hoe to be a nicotine slave. I'm not saying he's a jerk, but I have to do all the work. Acting manager, owner, and clerk. While he's sitting in the sun, man, it drives me berserk. It seems really clear to me. Doesn't anybody else get the irony? I gotta start smoking if I wanna get a breath of fresh air. With the secondhand smoking uproar, he can't smoke out front anymore. I thought he was absent before. Now he's gotta get at least a hundred yards from the door. He says he feels marginalized. He's hoping to quit and he tries. But if he gives up his favorite advice, he'll also give up all of that regular exercise. It seems really clear to me. Doesn't anybody else get the irony? I gotta start smoking if I wanna get a breath of fresh air. If you can't beat them, join them. It's true but troublesome. I've bought some cigarettes. They're made of bubble gum. Now I walk in the breeze and delight in the fun and pretend to ignite. It was all going more than all right till the boss said, can I bum a smoke and a light? Hey, what is this crap? Bubble gum on your break? You've gotta be joking. Oh, break, that's it, you are done. Wait, did I just get fired for not smoking? It seems really clear to me Doesn't anybody else get the irony I've got to start smoking if I want to get a breath of fresh air I've got to start smoking if I want to get some exercise Well, I better start smoking if I want to get a breath of fresh air Thank 
you. So a few years ago, I moved from South Carolina to New Jersey. All my friends in South Carolina said, uh, why? And then my neighbor up in Jersey said, there's two Carolinas? I said, yeah, east and west. I don't know why people in Jersey don't know anything about South Carolina. We've got lots of famous people from South Carolina. We have um, Stephen Colbert from South Carolina. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, Hootie and the Blowfish. And, um, <laughs> yeah, Cricket, Cricket. Vanna White. Van oh. Vanna White's from South Carolina. And we're very proud of Vanna White because she can spell. <laughs> Which brings us to what we're not known for in South Carolina, great public education. We're not usually in the top 10 states or even the top 48. <laughs> so. uh, which brings us to our state motto, thank God for Alabama. <laughs> the other thing we're known for in South Carolina, we are where the Civil War started. Yes, it's still going. <laughs> still got plenty of people in South Carolina who are determined to break off and form their own country because you know what they say. If at first you don't secede, try, try again. All right, well, if you hated that, wait till you hear this. In an orchard in California went two oranges were combined. The strainers needless because they're seedless and they call them clementines. Have you, like I, always wondered what would happen if Mary Poppins and Fred Flintstone got together? This is what keeps me up at night. I finally figured it out. This is what would happen. Fictitious caveman, magical nanny, one drove with feet and one flew. Put them together and what have you got? Yabbity dabbity do. And now you know. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. This one's for my husband. Blackberry ringing in the dead of night. Take this stupid thing and shove it high. Okay, maybe not. I get a lot of song ideas and I think, oh, that's, that's not going to work. So here's a couple more of those. Bad song ideas. <laughs> when your airline sucks, baggage charge is 50. This is for anyone who has to share a refrigerator with someone else. If you want me to pick up something next time that I go to the grocery store, put it on the list. Honey, would you get some detergent and some milk and eggs? I said, here's a pen. Put it on the list. Did he want a squash or a zucchini? Ziti, macaroni, or linguini? Should have seen me, you can bet, but I'll forget why I came if I don't have it in writing. So put it on the list. Write it on the back of a napkin. Type it up and print it out. I don't care. Just put it on the list. Did he tell me Windex were fantastic? Wonder if we need a tube of chapstick or plastic. If you want to use it or eat it, write it down. Don't make me repeat it. Just put it on the list. Put it on the list. <laughs> All right, thank you. So I'd like to play my big hit for you now. Unfortunately, I don't have one. So I'll do the next best thing. This is the song that got me my first piece of hate mail. <laughs> I don't get that sexy email that you do, but... <laughs> you could just share my email address with him. Thank you. No, really, don't go to the trouble. <laughs> Yep, got my first piece of hate mail for this. Not the last piece, the first piece. I was just wondering, hypothetically, what would you do? Theoretically, if something should happen accidentally or medically, what if your girlfriend was gone? If she died in a fire from a broken light fixture or happened to swallow a poisonous mixture, would I find my way back into the picture if you were suddenly alone? 
Would you call me up or would you write me a letter? Would you tie a message to your Irish setter? Try to get through so we could be together. What if your girlfriend was gone? Let me just stop right here because I can see you're all wondering, why isn't this song a huge hit? I too am baffled by this, but I know you're also thinking, Carla, don't give up, because the key to success in the music business and in life, really, is persistence. Just don't give up. Don't give up. Just keep singing that song and don't ever change a word of it. <gasps> I appreciate those optimistic, positive vibes on your shining faces, but you're too late. I've already rewritten the whole song. I was sick, lost a lot of weight, and... Uh, I went on this diet as part of my recovery. It was really strict. It was like no wheat, no dairy, no sugar, no caffeine, no chocolate, no reason to live. <laughs> and I actually got too thin. Um, all better now. But for a brief period, I was too thin. And I wrote these words. I was just wondering, hypothetically, what would you do? Theoretically, if something should happen accidentally or medically, what if your butt was gone? If sitting in a wooden chair felt like tax and you found you had nothing to hold up your slacks because instead of a butt now you just had a crack, something would have to be done. Would you write Dear Abby for advice and a letter, put a cushion in your chair to make it feel better, try to fatten up with brie and cheddar, what if your butt was gone? If your butt disappeared without a trace and everyone looked all over the place, why do you have that look on your face? Hey, it could happen to you. If that booty, patootie, that sweet derriere were now inexplicably no longer there, how soon would you miss it? How much would you care? What do you think you would do? Would you call me up? Would you fall to pieces? Would you make it the topic of your doctoral thesis? Try to go out and find a prosthesis. What if your butt was gone? They make them, you know. Prosthesis. I saw one at Spencer's. That's where I get all medical, my medical devices at Spencer's. Um, at the mall, during my break. <laughs> a butt, as you know, could be curvy or flat, dimpled or pimpled, skinny or fat, just like an opinion. Everyone's got one, but what if your butt was suddenly not one? If something should happen, hypothetically, what would you do? Theoretically, if something should happen accidentally or medically, what if your butt was gone? Would you call me up? Would you start confiding how you try to make it grow with fluorescent lighting? How you had to give up horseback riding? What if your butt was gone? Would you realize there's a good selection? Shopping for clothes in the children's section. Go to your closet, make a commotion. Take all your pants and throw them in the ocean. Hey, this is the sing-along part. Here we go. Does your butt hang low? Does it wobble to and fro? Can you tie it at a knot? Can you tie it at a bow? Can you sling it over your shoulder like a continental soldier? Or what if your butt was gone? Yeah, oh, it came back. It came back and it brought reinforcements. Oh. You ever been on a date, don't say no yet, and on the way to your destination, the guy takes you, or girl, takes you to the junkyard and says, look, there's my wrecked car. And there's where my date hit the windshield. Yeah, me neither. I was just wondering if maybe it had happened to you. You look concerned. Have you ever bend over in the bathroom and accidentally grab the shower curtain with your butt cheeks? <laughs> yes. um, oh, thank you, because I, I certainly haven't. No, not me. Me neither. Nope. Uh, you ever been on stage and realize you probably re revealed a little too much about yourself? <laughs> and then you think, oh, not again. <laughs> yeah, me neither. This is a true story. Actually, I think they're all true stories. <laughs> he was God's gift to women, you can ask him yourself. Little black books piling up on the shelf, long cool hair and a bad attitude. Absolutely sure he was one hot dude, I was a little put off. By our first meeting and a second and third with your frosty greeting, but I was rewarded for all this rejection when I saw you get dumped on the love connection. Yeah. 3 a.m. I 
I was watching TV, playing guitar, and drinking JD. Well, I was back from California, feeling down in the dumps. What I saw next pulled me out of my slum. There they were, three women, three men. Couldn't believe my eyes when I saw you among them. Competing for the prize, a red hot date. And fame among people who stay up real late. Well, you stood real cocky and you flipped your hair. Waited for your chance to be put on the air. You answered to all questions and you thought you impressed. All the girl had to say was, next. I was a little put off by our first meeting and our second and third with your frosty greeting. But I was rewarded for all this rejection when I saw you get dumped on the love connection. So one time, uh, a while back, before I got married, I, had, I was dating this guy, and he goes, I wrote you a song. And I was like, oh, I was so flattered. No one had ever written me a song before. And I was really excited until I heard it. I got a totally average woman. Stands about five foot three. Got a totally average woman. Weighs about 153. Oh, thanks for broadcasting that. She's a mean, mean woman. Statistically mean. When she walks down the street, some people notice, some don't. When she walks down the street, some people notice, but in general, most people don't. a whistle twice as many won't. She can make a blind man hear, make a deaf man see. She could have any guy who is no better or worse than me. I've got a totally average woman. IQ of a hundred. A hundred. She's a mean, mean woman. Statistically. She beats me, Lord, she beats me so bad. Every night she beats me, God, she beats me so bad. It's humiliating. She's the toughest Scrabble partner I have ever had. Well, she can let a sleeping dog lie, send a dead man to his grave. If she was a young child, she would occasionally misbehave. I've got a totally average woman. Stands about five foot three point seven. She's a mean, mean woman. Statistically mean. Baby, I would walk over room temperature coals for you. <laughs> reminded me of something when you were talking about like what would you do if you didn't have a butt um because um kim kardashian sure if you guys are familiar with her she recently just went through a very tumultuous time um that i can relate to so this is a personal message to kim she just cut her hair in case she didn't lose her butt just in case you were wondering but she cut her hair and i can totally relate she was having like issues as she was sitting in the chair she was like about to cry and i can understand because I just cut my hair, as you guys know, like 10 inches for the first time in like almost 20 years. So I know, Kim, I know how you feel. And if you want to talk about it, I'm here for you, girl, at Miss Stephanie on Twitter. Also, this is a good time to remind everybody that if you have questions for any of the artists or us or anything, um, you can always tweet us at Miss Stephanie Rocks. So. Without further ado, I would like to bring up our next fabulous performer. We are very psyched to welcome back to our stage the fabulous and multi-talented Lady I. She is an award-winning sideshow performer. You have a, it's a pretty long intro. <laughs> she is an uh, I know. Wait, wait. She is an award-winning sideshow performer and MC who has conquered fire-eating and breathing 
sword swallowing, the bed of nails, and glass walking, just to name a few. She's worked with everyone from Rob Zombie to the Cirque du Soleil and performed all over the U.S. A finalist for Stoli Originals Casting Call Competition, winner of the Bindlestiff Family Circus First of May Award, among others, and TV appearances on Discovery Channel's Oddities, Comedy Central's Tom Papa Live from New York, and Gossip Girl. She is also a writer, and her work has appeared in the New York Times, Penthouse, Playboy, Online, Salon, and The Atlantic. So... Please give a red hot welcome for the Lady I. Thank you for that, Miss Stephanie. Oh, my career sounds so much sexier than it actually is. <laughs> that I write the unsexy. Or I write. I am the one who makes you read Playboy and Penthouse for the articles. I actually write the highly unsexy articles, although kind of sexy. Mermaids are sexy. It depends on you know. Nerds are sexy. I write about nerds. Uh, I just got paid. I got to interview Margaret Show recently for Playboy.com, and I just got paid. And my favorite thing about the check was um, the lipstick prints on <laughs> the perfume. No, it, but that it came in an envelope with like just a return address on it, so that my mailman should not know that I'm a smut monger for a living. Like, that's how I pay my rent, by like peddling smut, yeah. yeah. Which is just fun to say. And I'm like, no, say it proud. I write for Playboy, I write for Penthouse, I get Hustler, I have the lad mad hat, hat trick. So I'm, I'm just this close to making that Ivy League degree pay for itself. But uh, you're not here to see me write, you're here to see me do stupid things, because that is my other stock and trade. Um, so let me get my stupid things equipment. That's not stupid things, it's really like stupid equipment. True, true. They are, they are, they are both, they are that, that fabulous combination of both stupid and deadly. <laughs> Which is really when you come down to it, you know, what showbiz is all about. Um, okay, so I, I am the sweetheart of the sideshow. Ooh. Um, and uh, I think once one of the, the few skills that, that Stephanie did not mention in her quite comprehensive intro of me was the human blockhead. Ooh. So um, I was just hired to do this by a very classy, classy museum up in Connecticut for their opening, and the governor of Connecticut was there, and I was, I was very like, it's fancy, I'm standing next to 18th century tapestries, it's, uh, you know, it's all so, so classy, it's all so, so nice, and um, I pulled all this stuff out, and then I saw the governor of Connecticut coming toward me, and I had two thoughts, and one is, this will come in very handy should I ever end up on death row in Connecticut, and <laughs> that picture is going to be awesome. And then, because um, there's a picture of me like hugging the governor of Connecticut. Awesome. Swear to God, he's looking down my shirt. Um, <laughs> just checking out the rack. Um, he, he's a Democrat. Uh, it's okay. Um, and the other thought was, I better put all of this away before his on his security detail tackles me first, and then ask questions second. So at any rate, uh, one of the, the things I brought to them was, uh, it was a history of Coney Island. Now this is a Coney Island classic. It dates way back. I like to call it the chopsticks of sideshow because it's pretty much the first thing that everybody learns in their sideshow training. Um, it's, uh, it's so named uh, by Robert Ripley of Ripley's Believe It or Not. Uh, and he saw the anatomical wonder, Mr. Melvin Burkhart, do this, and he said to Melvin, you'd have to be a real blockhead to do that. So this is the human blockhead. Now, it's very simple. You have an average, everyday hammer. This is a stainless steel hammer. There's nothing special about it. It does not bend. It does not fold up. Mine has flowers because I'm a lady. I like things ladylike. Uh, this is an average four-inch roofing nail, the very kind you might have around your own home, does not bend, does not fold up, it is not made from rubber or candy or anything of the sort that you could think of. Uh, just a stainless steel roofing nail. Now, this is average, this is average, clearly this is spectacular. Yeah. 
So now we are going to take them and put everything all together. So you have four inch roofing nail, stainless steel hammer, and this. <laughs> and it's gotta go somewhere. So we just <laughs> tap that in. I always stop when I can recall my social security number. When I can still do that, I know I've gone far enough. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the basic. This is the, the blockhead, the human blockhead. Now I have to say that the most dangerous part of this act is mainly for you because it's cold and flu season. So one sneeze and one of you is going to the ER. Okay, uh, it's not funny. Uh, yucky. Isn't that classy? That's why I get the classy, classy gigs. Okay, so that's the basic. That's the real basic. Um, but another thing that is extraordinary about all of this is that uh, unlike most humans, uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Cooper, my nose is completely symmetrical. Most humans are asymmetrical. You favor one nostril or the other. That's just a fact. You can look it up, ask your friends, ask them what their favorite nostril is. It's hours of conversation. So uh, I, on the other hand, perfectly symmetrical. I can do the double-barreled human blockhead. Ooh, yeah, badass. But I am a lady, so I like to do things ladylike. Now we have a beautiful new venue here at Sisters, and thanks for having me, and thanks for having us. And what I am gonna do for you is I am going to share the double-barreled human blockhead. And then, because this is a classy audience in a classy venue, we're all gonna learn something. Are we ready? Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. All right, let's do something dangerous and stupid. I have here the good family silver. I did not steal this from this lovely restaurant, so just rest assured. Uh, the good family silver happens to be stainless steel. It does not bend, it does not fold up, it is not made of rubber or candy or anything of the sort. It's just an ordi ordinary stainless steel fork and spoon. So ladies and gentlemen, first, the double-barreled human blockhead. Second, we learn something. Yay! <laughs> Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Ta-da! All right, especially the wait staff. What's wrong with this picture? Forks on the wrong side. I never get, sir, sir, you were not raised by wolves. I almost never get that. Yes, you always sat with the fork on the other side. And we have a woman here who is a professional table setter, used to Martha Stewart, work with all that classy, classy stuff, weddings, yeah. Professional restaurant staff, some rando in the back knows. Yes, you always sat with the fork on the other side. Ladies and gentlemen, the double-barreled human blockhead. Oh. Oh. I am the Lady I. Thank you, Miss Stephanie. Always fun to be back in the house. Uh, maybe in the front room where the ceilings are a little higher. We did do fire, the, actually, the last time that she was on. Um, so you guys stick around. Some of you just joined us. Carla's going to do another set. Lady I is going to do another set. But I just want to briefly mention another thing um, in case you guys, like, are ever on the Internet. <laughs> um, there was an article that went out this week. Um, Eve, you probably don't want to know this while you're eating. But um, it listed all the bacteria that they found at all of the subways. Right, every single subway station. You guys, if you're planning on ordering food, wait till this story is over. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm saying it because we're talking about bacteria. This place, of course, is very clean, I'm sure. But um, I just wanted to, like, like went station by station, and pretty much, like, for the most part, it's pretty clean around here. But just in case anyone was wondering, they did find 
47 unique bacteria, including species associated with, and this is at the Clinton Washington Sea Train Station, antibiotic resistance, radiation resistance, oil cleanup, toxic cleanup, respiratory ailments, tetanus, and hold on to your hats because this is the worst ones. Italian cheese, kimchi, and sauerkraut. <laughs> Seriously, hipsters, can you keep that sauerkraut, you know, in your, in your to-go box? Anyway, I just thought that was a very interesting tidbit. Um, another thing that we like to do for some of you guys that are just joining us for the first time is that we really like to get into the mind of our artists and really find out what keeps them creative. So I'm going to invite both of them up, and we have a bunch of questions for them. Is there any kimchi on this mic? Some sauerkraut. Other stations actually had mozzarella cheese. Those were the two prominent ones that I saw that I checked out a bunch of the stations. Pizza. Who's wasting all this cheese is what I want to know. I want to know Seriously. if this mic will go up my nose. <laughs> Probably not. I have to share that mic with you. Just <laughs> I don't mind. Um, so, well, just briefly, um, how did you get into performing? Like, was the guitar the first thing you picked up? It, or it was, unless you count, like, the xylophone I got for my first birthday. I, I don't think that counts. You still have it? <laughs> no, my mom's not very sentimental. <laughs> <laughs> she tossed that. So yeah. what, what um, brought you to music? Was it, did you grow up listening to music? You just decided one day, like, to pick up the guitar? Well, the guitar thing, my aunt came through visiting when uh, I was four, and she had a guitar. Mm -hmm. And after that, I, was, I want a guitar, I want a guitar, I want a guitar, I want a guitar, and and you got a guitar. Yeah, I did. <laughs> awesome. So I have a question for you, Lady I. So yes. like you were at Passover, you're younger, you were like looking at the silverware on the table, you were like, I bet I can. What inspired you? Um, actually, it's funny, I j this just came up again recently because I'm doing a, um, I, I did not perform at all until, I did not become a performer until I was like in my 30s. And so like last year, so like, which will be three years from now. <laughs> <laughs> I keep telling people, no. no, I'm going the opposite way. I'm like, I am 58 years old because people think I look amazing. That's what I said. If I do for 58, I look amazing. You do. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I was never real. I did love sideshow and freak show um, in a theoretical way growing mm -hmm. up, but it was not. I. I grew up in Manhattan, and we don't have county fairs, so I never really saw it growing up. I Isn't that just kind of like walking outside your apartment, though? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it was, so the spoon and the fork thing actually sort of came up um, when I first learned Blockhead, and I, I was surrounded by dudes who do it, and guys are always like, oh, I can make this more violent. And um, so I'd seen guys do it with electric drills and like oh bigger God. nails and ice picks. And I can do all of that. But I was like, wouldn't it be funny if I made it ladylike? Wouldn't it be, you know, it in, in as much as that is an incredibly dainty thing to do. <laughs> um, so I was walking down the street wondering if there was any way I could make human blockheads sort of more girly because... <laughs> Again, like I just, I had always seen men do it and I'd always seen men do it. It becomes this, you know, like they like power tools. So it becomes this like, how can I make this more manly? And, you know, and it's, um, so I was like, oh, it would be more fun if yeah, I could make exactly. it feminine. We're going to have a guy so. next week that puts a power drill in his nose. Yeah. Just yeah. so you guys make sure you tune yeah. in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So we have some questions specifically. This is nothing you could have prepared for. Don't be nervous. Um, <coughs> but I will let you pick a number. One through, uh-oh, my questions are out of order. One through 18. So you guys can each pick one if you like. Three. Three. Oops. My questions are out of order. What things did you have to let go of or leave behind in order to take the leap? In your artistry? Oh, I had to let go of the idea of security. <laughs> but I was very fortunate in that I got fired from my job for being sick. <laughs> and I don't think that's legal, but anyway. No. And then I went, I realized there was no, there's really no such thing as security, so I might as well do what, I, what I'm going to do. So. Nice. I, I don't know. It wasn't much of a sacrifice working in the mall. <laughs> like, oh, gee, I had such a career here, you know. <laughs> So it, it, I was fortunate in that it happened early that I, 
it they gave me the shove and I went I ah, might as well get over my stage fright you know because nice. I've already been fired what what else is gonna happen what else right? yeah, exactly what else can happen where can I go from here <laughs> <laughs> perfect also let go yes. of the idea of living somewhere upscale <laughs> <laughs> I know sometimes I feel like my whole life is like I'm just falling without a safety net the whole time. Yeah. That's kind of like what being an artist is here. Yeah, totally. Would you like to answer? I can ask you the question again. What things did you have to let go of or leave behind in order to take the leap? Um, Definitely preciousness. I had to let myself get up there and fail. Like I spent years not doing anything in the performing world or being seen or being on stage mainly because I was afraid I would get up on stage and like the collective audience would point at me and be like she's fat or horrible or uh, not a good person and we you're a fraud and a phony and like I got up and I finally was like well if I'm going to fail I am going to literally go down in flames (laughs) (laughs) which I've done (laughs) which I've done um but once you sort of allow yourself to fail at something it becomes that much easier to succeed at it because oh yes absolutely yeah because you get um you get over it you're like well the world did not stop spinning and i'll live to fight another day so exactly um would you like to pick a number this time i'll take the number eight eight What is the thing that takes up most of your time outside of creative work that is required to make it happen? Napping. (laughs) (laughs) We all need a good nap. Honestly, I love napping. Um, I'm not even, I'm kidding, but I'm not. Like, uh, Like learning to balance my sleep was a big deal. Like the first two, three years I was performing, like I would perform at the opening of an envelope because you need to get that under you. And then, um, you know, I'm like, why am I exhausted and and dehydrated? And it's because coffee and vodka are not sleep. And, uh, uh, (laughs) like you, and you know, like stay up all night, drink coffee all day. I also worked, I still worked full time at office jobs at that point. Um, but do you find that you can nap anywhere? Some people no, just can't. No, no, no. I cannot nap anywhere. Um, that's one ability I did not inherit from my dad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, but, <laughs> but he's also, I think it's an old man thing because my dad is yeah, 84. Yeah, my dad can anywhere. It, yeah. It's like, oh, I'm like talking Planes. Luckily not when he's driving, but <laughs> just about. Um, no, but I think just honestly taking care of yourself and, and I, I'm kidding, but I'm not like just balancing it out. And, oh, yeah. um, you know, that's how the, your brain recharges itself. So absolutely. Yeah. I'm a big advocate for sleeping. <laughs> so it's hard in this city because the city goes for 24 hours. Like, yeah. You don't need to sleep. Like, haven't they come up with that pill yet? That just yeah. Well, they have. You just don't sleep. want it. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's um, called meth, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and uh, you know, I can always be up freaking out about something because that's what I'm I'm really good at it I'm really good I'm about good worrying too, yeah. yeah I'm really good at worrying so uh uh getting enough sleep got so. it um I'll repeat the question what is the thing that takes up most of your time outside of creative work that is required to make it happen well I did too learn that sleep is not optional <laughs> I learned that the hard way, and I have learned to nap. I used to not be able to wind down and nap, but now I can. I think it's because we have a small dog. If she gets up against you, she's like, it's awesome. My dad falls asleep everywhere, too. You know know what wakes him up? You know what will wake him up? Try to take the remote. No, oh, I'm yeah. watching that. We're every time. I'm like, Dad, you're <laughs> snoring. You're not watching that. I was watching them. I was exactly. just resting my every eyes. Every time. I love that you one. Kn- but the real time sync, email. <laughs> email is the time sink that it's like you got to do it you can't not answer emails or you won't have any bookings uh, you know everything's done but not text or email or whatever but it's email is really where yeah I I have an email address that's like 15 years old so everybody had so I have like a lot of delete 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 that's where I've been getting my selective spam (laughs) (laughs) just kidding honey we're gonna have a great valentine's day (laughs) <laughs> um seriously why did they take away nap time from adults that's so not fair right can we get hillary in 2016 can we bring back naps 
naps. Come on, Google. They have like nap rooms. Siesta. There. Siesta. Yes, yeah, see. Si. Siesta. Um, so I have another question for you guys. So take another. You guys can fight amongst yourselves who will pick the next number. What, is it the last one? It's the last one. Okay. We could do it. We could do them all night. I got more questions, so you have to come back another time. <laughs> but these questions are the ones that I personally wrote. I didn't write the other ones, um, but I personally wrote those. So go ahead. Somebody, pick a anyone? One. What's the last good book you read? Take it. <laughs> we don't read books. <laughs> oh, no, I read it. Just kidding. Uh, I'm currently reading Jonathan Latham's Dissident Gardens, and it had a line in it today that was so good. I took an Instagram photo of it. Like, oh. I'm that nerdly. It was his, uh, it was something to the extent of his, the curvature of his spine tended toward the rabbinical, and his eyes tended toward the heretic. Something like that. Yeah, I know. It's really you exciting like for my followers. To, like, read well, <laughs> pretty <laughs> much. But it was just, it, his writing is really good. And I really like it. And I, I read, awesome. that's my favorite thing about commuting in New York is that you get to read all the time. I do. Actually, I just read Just Kids, the Patty Smith. Oh, yeah, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, she lived right here yeah. on my old street, Hall Street. So I was like freaking out. I was like, wait, what was my address again? I was like running around the corner to like actually check to make mm -hmm. sure. It wasn't my house. It wasn't <laughs> my house, but it was literally like less yeah. than a block away. So I was yeah. really excited. All right, here's another question for if you don't. <laughs> you let me off. She's let me off without the book. reading. That's why she didn't want to answer that because oh, she's course. writing a book, oh. right? Um, if you were a spice, what would you be? A spice. Well, hopefully not crusty and moldy like all the ones I threw out of That's the cabinet of the other day. <laughs> you put like that in your food. When I turn it's it not moldy. Down. Needs another hint of crust. Uh, I don't know. I'm, first thing that came to mind is cinnamon. That's a good one. A lot of health benefits with that one. Either that or sporty. <laughs> 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 uh. <laughs> Do you have a spice preference? Uh, I was going to say cinnamon, too, because it goes with both sweet and savory. It does. So it's, it's a pretty good I one. I used it on my breakfast and my dinner last night. Wow. See? I know. Yeah. Um, I know you guys might think that's a little weird, but I'm a baker, so that's why I was curious about the spices. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, thank you, ladies, thank very you. much for your insight. You guys stick around. Lady I's going to do another set for us. Okay, so uh, I'm going to bring out my other classy, classy act. This is my other classy, classy act. This is Actually, the, this is the act that uh, it got me on Gossip Girl. No, I, I was lit, you know, like, hey, do you want to chubby middle-aged white woman and they're like yeah sign us <laughs> it's just because I'm so rare and let me explain what a what a sparkle pony I am for a second um there are seven billion people on earth there are like uh fewer than 300 living people who can do what I do and fewer than 10 percent of those are women that's like 30 women on planet earth um and so this is the rarest sideshow skill. In fact, it's one of the rarest skills. And people come up to me all the time, and they're like, you're the first sword swallower I've ever seen live and I, in person. And I was like, statistically, that has got to be so. Um, so I'm going to explain how this works. Uh, I'm going to explain that a little physiology to you. The human body has three gag reflexes. You have one here at the back of your throat. We all know about that one. You have one here, which is actually a bend in the esophagus, and it's going to be, in order to do this, I'm going to be pushing my heart slightly out of the way, which is not a phrase like that most people are comfortable with, like pushing my heart slightly out of the way. But if you're dating, it's a good, uh, it's a good way to come at it. Uh, and then there's one that keeps the acids down in your stomach. Now this first sword, is this is the bare minimum you could do to be accepted into the uh, Sword Swallowers Association. And speaking of uh, days this month, we actually have an International Sword Swallowers Day, which is the last Saturday in September. And I think it's usually at Ripley's, but I'm going rogue this year. I'm going to be in Louisiana. I'm going to be in New Orleans performing. So we're doing it down there. I think it'll be the largest gathering of female sword swallowers um, ever, which is like five of us. <laughs> it, 
we're, it's a, you know, we're not a big group, so it's statistically two of us in a room is a big deal. Um, in a cat fight. No, <laughs> I kid, I kid. So this is 15 inches of solid stainless steel. It does not bend. It does not fold up. If you could fake this, Chris Angel would do it. <laughs> now, I am going to take uh, 15 inches of solid stainless steel. I'm going to pass it through all three gag reflexes without impaling my inner child. Now, I like to refer to this sword as the amuse-bouche. That is French, again, classy, classy crowd. That is French for hors d'oeuvre. So, ladies and gentlemen, 15 inches of solid stainless steel as a warm up, down the hatch without a scratch. I hope so. Main course. <laughs> this is 19 inches of solid stainless steel. It does not bend. It does not fold up. Again, if you could fake this, Chris Angel would do it. Now, I am going to take 19 inches of solid stainless steel. I'm going to pass it through all three gag reflexes. And then I am going to take a bow for what will surely be this room's thunderous applause. Thunderous applause. Are we ready? All right, again, as we say in the trade, to the hatch without a scratch. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Lady I, and I thank you. you know, I was going to say, if your acid came back up, you should just drop it in the C train, because I don't think they had that bacteria there already. You might have been adding to it. Um, we have another set from Carla, so without further ado, come on back up, lady. Tough act to follow. Um, okay, let's have a little set list. All right. <laughs> Carmina reminds me of uh, when I wind up on stage with two or three other really serious songwriters singing all these beautiful thoughts about saving the planet, and then I get up and sing a song about my butt. <laughs> so I was having a problem making good segues, and then I finally figured out, since I was feeling self-conscious about writing ridiculous songs, I can solve the problem by writing a self-conscious, ridiculous song about feeling self-conscious about writing a ridiculous song. It's a homeopathic cure, actually. But. I sat and listened to each story, deep, profound, evocatory. Courageous men who risk their lives, love songs written for their wives. And then it was my turn. I took my lyric sheet outside to burn cuz i had nothing to say nothing 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 to say it's a sing along nothing 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 to say at home i was hilarious i laughed at every page now i think it's funnier that i'm standing on a stage cuz i have nothing to say so i try to be more serious and get outside my head. But everything worth saying, exact, including that, my playing is not bursting with originality. I am not the first guitar player to play C, G, and D. Must have nothing to say. Nothing, 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 nothing to say. Nothing, 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 nothing to say. 
At home I was Chet Atkins with masterful technique. It seemed like such a great idea when I played it for my dad last week. Now I have nothing to say. I do not save the planet, not even just one tree. I don't stop abuse of children or even those abusing me. My songs won't work in churches, not even at a peace rally. I must have nothing to say. Uh, nothing, 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 nothing to say. Zero, zippo, not a zilcho, nothing to say. At home I was a genius, now my songs all sound the same. When they introduce me, I wish they'd use a different name, cause I have nothing to say. nothing. <laughs> I used to have a stamp collection. Anybody else ever collect stamps when they were a kid? That was really just me. I took it to the appraiser. I was, I've been working on it since I was nine years old, and I took it to the appraiser, and he goes, it's not worth anything. Just use the stamps. I'm so glad I have my, I'm glad I have my bottle cap collection to fall back on. <laughs> taking that there next week. Who's excited about the next Star Wars movie finally coming out? Episode 7, we've been waiting 30 years for this. And, um, well, you've been waiting zero years, right, because you're not 30 yet, so. Um, here's a little tune about Star Wars. Not necessarily about any particular episode. I don't want to start the debates about whether 4, 5, and 6, or 1, 2, and 3, also known as 1, 2, and 3, and 4, 5, and 6, or better or worse, but um, it's about all of them. The Force is the Force, of course, of course, and no one can tell you about the Force, except, of course, the Jedi Knight, and most of them are dead. Go right to the corpse and ask the force when, when is it fitting to use the force? I'd like, of course, to use the force for purposes of good. People yakety yak a lot and waste your time of day. But Obi-Wan will never appear unless he has something to say. It's too bad that Jedi's cannot see what others can vision with ESP. Or else Luke Skywalker wouldn't have tried to slip the tongue to his sister. I'm just saying. Hey. Maybe I put it, should have put that in my bad songs collection. I, I'm just saying, they never talked about it, right? Remember when, like, Luke and Leia made out, and then, then they found out they were brother and sister later, and they never talked about it? So I'm hoping there's, like, a Dr. Phil cameo in this next, <laughs> in this next episode that can get real. Uh, so, yeah, well, while we're doing bad songs, how about this one? Um... Well, you didn't get what you wanted for Christmas, even with your 10-page wish list. That was 25 years ago. Let it go, let it go, let it go. On the nth day of Xmas, my algebra teacher gave to me a second year in the same course. Uh, from a distance, your breath is not that bad. So I'll be dating you from a distance. Um, oh, this is really something that needs to stop. This one right here is my PSA, public service announcement. You wear them baggy and let some underwear show. You look a groovy as long as you're moving slow. But in a foot chase, you better grab a good hold of those man pants. You can't run down the street when they're down around your ankles, those man pants. Wear a belt, hold them up with a pair of suspenders, those man pants. And if you're nerdy, you can wear them real high. Your belt can double as a leather necktie. You check your heartbeat by unzipping the fly of those man pants. And you could cut them up into shorts for the summer. It still looks better than showing off a plumber crack. I come down, I come up, show them off, give it up for those man pants. So, yeah, back when I got sick and went on that diet and everything, they, I went to the doctor, and they, they took them a long time to figure out what was going on. I had some autoimmune stuff going on, and they said, um, well, we got good news and bad news, and good news and bad news, and good news and bad news. I said, well, give me the bad news first, and third and fifth. 
And he said, well, um, the bad news is you're, you're very sick. But the good news is we have something that can help you. And the bad news is it's prednisone. Anybody been on prednisone? Yeah, there's always several in the room. That's very, it's used for everything. My cat and I were on prednisone at the same time. So his was cherry flavored. Mine tasted like Ajax. Well, what was up with that? So the bad news is prednisone, of course, it has, it has a lot of side effects. And um, weight gain, mood swings, osteoporosis, cataracts, diabetes, and insomnia. But the good news is your kitchen floor will be spotless, your CDs will be in perfect alphabetical order, and you'll catch up on all those reruns of Matlock and Law and & Order and Psych and Crossing Jordan. Okay, so anyway, an ode to the medication that saves your life and makes you want to kill someone. Prednisone will make you get real fat. Prednisone will give you cataracts. Prednisone, it will destroy your bones. So take some prednisone, destroy your bones today. Prednisone, your moods are up and down. Prednisone, your face is big and round. Prednisone will mess with your hormones. So take some prednisone, spend your life alone today. Give it to your cat, give it to your dog, give it to your guinea pig. See him acting weird, see him eat a lot, see him getting really big. Take it for your gout, or if you got a bout, a poison or a poison IV. Take it in a drop, take it in a pill, take it intravenously. Prednisone, you start with one complaint. Prednisone, now you've got seven or eight. Prednisone, you could be dead, you know. So take your prednisone or pick your tombstone today. I was picking on my tombstone the other day, just for fun, you know, got a plan ahead. Can't leave it to my sister to figure out what to put on that tombstone. Lord knows what she'll say. So I, th I was thinking, you know, I'll have one that says, I told you I was sick. But it turns out, turns out that one's been done <laughs> to death. And um, then I thought, well, maybe I'll have one that says, uh, I'm with stupid, Depen depending on who's next to me, of course. Uh, then I thought, no, that's not, that's not, I don't know who's going to be next to me, so, and if, if it's my husband, he's really not going to appreciate that, so, let me see, maybe I'll have one uh, that reflects my hobbies, I like to do crosswords, I could have one that says, uh, six down and three across, <laughs> okay, um, but I think, I think really what I'm leaning towards is uh, the guilt trip, oh, now you come visit, <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Okay, I have one last song for this set uh, before our closing number. And it was inspired by my trip to, my first trip to New York City. Um, we don't, the, the things are kind of backwards in the South. Like, I never wonder in New Jersey or New York if someone's mad at me. You pretty much know instantly. Down South, we just smile and then we talk about you behind your back for the next 30 years. So... It, we think it's southern hospitality. I think it's actually passive aggression. <laughs> yeah, well, we do. We can, we can say something nasty and then say bless his heart. But I'm more inclined to say nothing until you leave. And, then, and me, like, I never swear in public. But, you know, at home it's like blah, 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 you know. But at, here it's in stereo, just all down the sidewalk. I was just amazed. It's a different scene. But it's not that southerners don't swear. We just do, we got the inside personality and then the public personality so but man if I lived in New York City I'd have to swear uh, it's, it's a pressure cooker so anyway inspired. what it's in inspired required, required. <laughs> it's required it's the law it's like we got to have three waffle houses at every exit you have to swear at least 47 times a day so um, but I'm, I'm gonna do the southern version of this for you since since we're streaming and who knows wh who's watching and maybe my dad. So, uh, yeah, here we go. A couple things, if you're thinking about being a folk singer, there's a couple things you gotta do. First, you gotta write a protest song and then you gotta learn to play the harmonica. Now, I haven't got very far with the harmonica, just, just one note so far. Okay, I just have to, it's not a sword, but it'll do, all right. Let me just get it in tune. Okay, perfect. All right. 
so protest song, protest song. That, that's, where I was, that's where I got the idea for this. Is like, I couldn't figure out a topic that I could protest about in the South and not get beat up in the parking lot for being political. So I finally figured it out. I could protest over the overuse of foul language. One word in particular. If I had the copyright on the word, I'd say this job and yourself, you dumb. No need for hard work and no need for luck. If I had the copyright on the world, it's filthy, it's nasty, unseemly and vile. That all may be true, but it's so versatile. So often deleted, this fine expletive is a verb, a noun, and an adjective. If I had the copyright. I'd have no need for that gum, dang darn shoot or shucks. No need for hard work and no need for luck. If I had the copyright on the word. Not a gasp, not a sigh, for my mouth would be heard. Nope, just a cha-ching when I hear the F word. If people got jealous of all of my wealth, I'd tell them to copyright. <laughs> And if I had the copyright on the word, it would roll off my tongue like water off a duck. Four letter word usage is perfectly honed. I could retire on Brooklyn alone. Where they say, motherfuckers, I don't give up. Either can take a joke and hey, what the as well, fuck you, so don't get fucked up. Quit fucking around or you're gonna get. <laughs> if I had the copyright on the word, I'd say this job and yourself, you don't. No need for hard work and no need for luck. All together. Gets so oh. mad when I use it on social media. Um, so I just want to take a quick second to thank all of you all for coming out. I want to thank you to Sisters Damon for letting us do Miss Stephanie's house here. Thank you to the Lady I. Thank you, Carla. Thank you to my amazing crew, Ed, Sean, and Micah, of course, and to Miss Alia, who's moving to Mexico, our cool. designer. And if you, <laughs> I don't know what you're. And our cameraman. And I said, Ed, already, you missed it. You see, you're confusing me. I think it's because I have a cold or a flu or whatever I had. Um, as always, you can always reach us at MissStephanie'sHouse.com on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on YouTube. So check us out. Um, our next show is going to be March 15th. And um, we're going to take you out with another one of Carla's wonderful songs. <laughs> I say potato and you say not. I say tomato and you say her. Potato not. Tomato her. Let's call the whole thing off. I forgot to explain. This is a duet with a Klingon. It's, uh, I forgot when I don't explain it, they think you're doing like Yiddish or something. So like, it's, <laughs> it's to celebrate the um, recognition of Klingon. Boy Scouts Day. <laughs> yeah, right. It's also the recognition of uh, not just Eagle Scouts, but the. Recognition of Klingon is an actual language. They're taking over. <laughs> it's right, they're taking over those immigrants. <laughs> Where were we? You see, I say pajamas and you say. Nimna. I say bananas and you say. Hagdabach. Bananas. Nimna. Pajamas. Hagdabach. Let's call the whole thing off. But oh, if we call the whole thing off, then we must part. Oh, God.
hope you know any English. Surrender or die. Okay, then if you say, Lou, I'll say, all right. And you say, Kaibe, I'll say, no problem. Doop, whatever. Noops, Better call the calling off. Let's call that whole thing off. Say, Thank you guys, we'll see you.